Where's my mark? Ah, thank you. Hmm. Liberty. Mark is the best. Hello and welcome to episode 183 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. Today is what is today? The Actually, tenth. tomorrow will be February 10th. Or the wait, do we do the 10th or 11th? The 10th. Okay. Uh, today is actually February 9th, but tomorrow is the 10th when we will be releasing this episode of the year 2020. I am Robert McFlugel, and with me, as always, is Slappy Jones 2. Show notes page for this episode will be mcflugel.com slash 183, where you can find links to the things we talk about, as well as checking out libertymugs.com, where we have been hard at work adding some new products. We have, uh, We've got a, a clock for sale uh, it, that says uh, it is time to buy Bitcoin, or it's always time to buy Bitcoin. I forget what it exactly says, but hey, Bitcoin just went over uh, $10,000 again, and uh, that's kind of neat. It's been there before. Sure. I think it's going to go way past that, but it's uh, it's interesting to and fun to acknowledge uh, certain milestones like this, so... Hopefully we won't see anything below 10,000 again, but I highly doubt that. Uh, and also we have uh, a couple of uh, pint glasses for sale now. So uh, we only have a few. And if you have one that you would like to see, maybe something that's a mug that you would like to see as a pint glass, let us know. And that's how we will prioritize adding the pint glasses. Um, so... And as always, we are very happy to take your Bitcoin off your hands in exchange for a mug or anything else that we sell at LibertyMugs.com. We're just taking it off your hands. Yeah, we're doing you a favor, actually. <laughs> you don't have to worry about securing it. You just give it to us. Yeah, and instead you can you know, you know, can be hard at work securing a mug. Also, uh, um, unless I forget to do this, which I hope I don't, we will. you will have heard a uh, the Liberty Mugs advertisement. Um, in the beginning of this episode, so yeah, I mean, you you could probably say that we're we've been endorsed by uh, Michael Bloomberg, one of the candidates, mm -hmm. one of the Democratic candidates for president of the United States. So, Slappy, to kind of jump into our episode, sure. Are, since are we're talking about Bloomberg and he's endorsing us, uh, yeah. Why don't we are, talk about how we don't care about politics? Oh, I was going to say that. Like, I thought you were really into it and really were oh, like no. watching everything. Uh, Intently. Did you watch the State of the Union address? No, I have not. And neither did I. I haven't listened to any of it. I don't know it, what it. What I have no idea. Is it just me, um, or does it seem like when I was younger and like cared more? It, I feel like there's a lot more State of the Union addresses than there ever used to be. Well, they do one every year. Oh, is this annual? Yeah, it's still. Just, yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Then, then my perception of time is. <laughs> You're getting old. Yeah, time flies by. Um, okay. Yeah. No, they do one every year. I, I mean, I guess if there's some political junkie out there who wants to correct me, but I believe that's the case. And I didn't watch any of it. I don't know what he said. What I I saw some memes. Um. You know, stuff about, like, Democrats sitting down when you would think a Democrat would be clapping and Republicans clapping when you would think they wouldn't, kind of stuff like that, how they just kind of follow along the party. And I certainly saw the videos and the memes about Nancy Pelosi ripping up the speech at the end, um, which was funny. Um, but that's about all I saw in the State of the Union. Yeah, that's about – I didn't even know about the sitting and – memes about sitting and standing. The only thing I was aware of it was about the Nancy Pelosi uh, ripping ripping her copy of the speech in half, which um, I didn't know that everyone got a copy of the speech. Neither or, did I. Or, other, that, speech. or not everyone, but – or at least some people. Nancy had Pelosi. A copy. Yeah, at least Nancy Pelosi had a copy of the speech. But what was funny about that, and there is a Liberty mug about this, but um, – so a little bit later – maybe a day or two after uh, the State of the Union, there was a picture that was shown from the State of the Union before she ripped the pieces of paper that showed that the pieces of paper were, were, were pre-cut. <laughs> yeah, it looked pretty bad, too. It looked like it was... I mean, she's not a great actress. 
No, but it's like, and and people were saying, oh, this is this this shows how how choreographed politics are and everything, and it's all it's all a show, and it's like, well, no kidding. Yeah. But my question is, not that like why did like why, like it's you're tearing a couple pieces of paper. Because it she is playing to a certain demographic, who she expects will love that. You no, know? I no, I I understand that. I understand why. But I don't she even think it played, did it play well with Democrats. Were they like, yeah, Nancy, uh, you uh, rip it up, or were they just kind of like rolling their eyes like everyone else? I don't know. My question is, why did you not? Why did she decide that she needed to, um, tear the speech in half, or even why is she like, why why did she like tearing a piece of paper in half? Or a couple, I don't know, look like maybe three pieces of paper. <laughs> Why did you need to pre-cut it? Rip it. Well, like that's, it would that, be that nothing... blows my mind. Like, no, what, could I you have, what could you have screwed up there? <sighs> no, I got to give her credit for that because you got to be prepared, man. Like, you got to do double check everything. I still have a checklist when I go on appointments. Make sure I have business cards, all the little th – you want to make sure you do the little things. You don't want to forget that. If she goes to rip that paper and it doesn't rip, how embarrassing is that? You better be damn sure that paper's ripping when you rip it. So if you have to little – cut it, nick it, go for it. But you're going to put on a show. You better be prepared. You can't screw up. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> and, um, and, and it makes sense that they – I mean, to, to think that – all that they do isn't completely choreographed. Uh, you're insane, or just buy all that stuff hook, line, and sinker. But it just blows my mind that that you would like. How do you not? How are you not capable of just ripping a piece of paper that's not pre-cut? Like, do you see what I, I'm saying? I I absolutely do. And all I'm saying is, like, you know, before you step out on the field, make sure your shoes are tied. Do the little things. Be prepared. And uh, she was prepared. She was ready. She knew she was going to do it. Made a made a made a show of it. Like made it very obvious. You know, it's not like it was some mm -hmm. emotional uh, tearing the paper. What I thought was interesting, and I got this. I'm stealing this from Dave Smith. I believe it was Dave Smith um, earlier this week. Is it's funny because she rips the paper, and it's supposed to be the resistance. And you know, Donald Trump's such an idiot. I'm just going to rip his paper. Yet she voted for his military bill and voted for the Patriot Act. And, you know, if you wanted to stop, if you really wanted to stop Donald Trump, there's ways she could do it, but she chooses to sign off on all of his giant spending bills. So, you know, how much is she really against what Donald Trump's doing? <laughs> not, not that much. Uh, which is funny because people, like you said, how you thought that she was doing it, and I agree that doing it just kind of for her base to rally the troops to be like, oh yeah, we're ripping Donald Trump's speech up, but then she just goes and goes along with, with the big stuff that Donald Trump does. And it's like, the people that care, and we were kind of talking about this the other night, but like, it kind of blows my mind now that people like get so riled up over this kind of stuff. Right. Like at what point do you, cause all this information, it's not like we have like some sort of special access to, to information or to, or like an understanding or like, we're the only ones that can see these videos or hear or, or have this yeah, analysis. We're all out there, right? <laughs> yeah. Like how do you, like take all this stuff seriously and i get people care about politics i'm not trying to say that oh how, how stupid you are for you know not not being a, an anarchist or libertarian i get it i get the people that's what that's yeah what i get thinking, that you go through 12 years of indoctrination camp like it's hard to break that right i get it but how do you just like filter this stuff out just so easily i i mean I know when I was a the Republican normie, when I got confronted with something that that made me look bad or made my side look bad, I don't remember just kind of – well, I brushed it off, but I remember it bothered me. Well, yeah, that was – I'm sure I've told my story on this podcast before, but that was how I found Henry Hazlitt. 
is I had a long discussion with a Democrat, and I, I was like, next time I'm just going to crush this guy with economics. I bought economics in one lesson, and that took me down a path to where we are today. Um, but it was because we had a discussion, and I thought I held my own, but it was like there was little things I was missing. I thought I could have done better, and it just bothered me. So I went out and found that book and um, because I couldn't just let things go. I couldn't just forget it. I had to learn. I had to know, and I, want, I wanted to have better arguments. Yeah, it reminds me of something that happened at work the other day. I'm pretty fortunate. My coworkers are – one's actually – Fair, I, I don't know that he would call himself a libertarian, but fairly libertarian, and we agree on a lot of stuff. And even the stuff we don't agree on, he's very, very good to talk to. Um, uh, the other people are kind of – Wait, is he one of those guys who says Wayne Gretzky is better than Ovechkin? Yes, well, he's correct there. I don't know where that like lie came up – came from that you – said about me with that but that's that's neither here nor there um but for the most like my, my co-workers aren't like lunatics for the most part uh when when politics get brought up like i can i can pretty candidly talk about my positions and they don't lose their minds but the other day uh i guess it was a few weeks ago it was the the anniversary of the holocaust or something or, or something within the, the start of the holocaust yeah and um I want coworker who's more of a kind of Republican conservative type, and kind of is does the uh, more of the boomer kind of uh, <laughs> views on mm -hmm. things, but um, you know this it was it was brought up and I and I said something like yeah it's kind of funny that people are saying like let this never happen again Not, never let anything like this happen again and I'm like man this stuff is still happening today like the Uyghurs in China. Uh, Yemen were committing, you know, literal genocide in Yemen. And she says, well, do you think that the United States should like really like get involved with that stuff or anything? And I'm like, the United States are the ones that are committing the genocide in Yemen. And she goes, no, no, no. I mean, I mean the, the, in China with the Uyghurs, yeah. do you think that we should go intervene? And I said, no, I mean, I, I don't, I think we would make it worse just like everything else we've done. But it was shocking to me that she did not bat an eye at me saying the United States was committing genocide in Yemen. Like, didn't say like, wait, really? Or no, there, there's no way we're doing that. Just, just, it just completely didn't phase her at all. Uh, yeah, I get that all the time at work. Um, and I work with almost, almost all Democrats. There's like... Republican or two. There's not a libertarian uh, within a thousand yards of my building, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I, I, I am at work the anti-war guy, and I just they just kind of roll my eyes, you know. <laughs> not my eyes, their eyes. They just roll their eyes at me whenever anything comes up, I talk about that. Uh, I, I go to the war, and of course they have to agree, um, but they don't care to change their politics right uh, it brush it aside like it's nothing yeah it just it just shocked me that i could i could accuse uh, talking we're you know remember the frame the the frame of reference we're in is that we're talking about the start of the holocaust and saying that which was a genocide the most famous genocide that most uh, americans can think of we're talking about let this never happen again, and I say the United <laughs> States is currently committing a genocide in Yemen. And, and it doesn't even it doesn't even say it doesn't even say no, they're not right. Well, I don't believe because because I, I would actually take that. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I would take it and like expand on it and be like, well, look it up, look into it. Um, but I, I'd be better with that answer than the answer you said she gave you yeah i would i would totally respect someone who said no way what do you mean we're, that's what's going on because most people don't understand that but but i i can't respect someone who just i, I don't even know I don't, I don't i don't 
I don't know. It just blows my mind that you could you could hear those words that we are in the in the in the context of talking about genocide and how awful it is and it should never happen again and saying we are the United States government is currently doing it and no nothing. Hey, we've gotten text messages from a mutual friend about prohibition. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, make sure it never happens again. And I mean, this is a guy who've heard, who's heard our spiel several times. Um, you ever hear of the war on drugs? Ring a bell. Right. <laughs> um, but so it's not uncommon. No, it's not. It's not. I just it, – it's, it's just so strange to me because it is pretty wild for someone to, to accuse for, – for an American – Who's a you know, and she would consider herself like a patriot. Like I said, she's kind of the conser- boomer conservative type. And for someone to sit there and accuse, you know, the people that she kind of holds in high regard as committing genocide, I, 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 I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Like I just, I just, it's unfathomable to me that you just brush it aside that easily. Yeah, it's nothing. It's why I almost wanted to after I I like, kind of realized what happened. I wanted to like turn around and be like, "Hey, did you did you hear what I said? Did I well was I not clear? Did you not hear me? What, what like what happened there?" Um, one thing I think is funny with um the the normies in my life is things like if you remember a couple years ago. They were all worried that Donald Trump was going to make Kim King Kim Jong Un nuke Guam, and they were all worried about it. He's going to blast this missile, and this guy's crazy. He's going to fire nukes at us, and then it just left the news. And uh, same thing with the Kurds in in Syria. Uh, if Donald Trump moves a dozen troops out of where they are. The Kurds are going to be slaughtered. Like these people have no idea who the Kurds are, what they're doing, why they're there or anything. But they were so concerned about the Kurds and turning our backs on the Kurds. And then they leave and nobody asks what happened to the Kurds. Even like nobody more. followed up or said like, oh, how about that? Nothing happened. The Syrians defended them like nothing. Even in very recent history, Iran. See how quickly that fell out of the news cycle? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like it, and it seems like a million years ago now. Right, and it goes from being like World War Three, the world's going <laughs> to end, we're all going to nuke each other, to like, uh, nothing. Yeah, people were actually seriously thinking that we were on the brink of World War Three, And I guarantee you that it is not on the top. Like, if you ask the average person today... Who was talking about World War Three a couple months ago? Like, what is what are the top priorities on your list that you're thinking about? Um, top ten, let's say, things going on in the world. Iran would not be mentioned. Not even close. Yeah. You would. You might like say like, what about Iran? I was like, what about Iran? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, probably. Speaking of top priorities in the world right now, what do you think about all the coronavirus stuff? I don't think about it. Um, I don't know. I mean, if people are dying from it, that's sad. But right. I, I really haven't thought much about it. I think that, I mean, maybe it's the boy who cried wolf. I mean, it's like every other year there's another disease that's going to kill us all. We had Zika, SARS, bird flu. Um, swine flu. Swine flu. There's uh, one every the, year. There's the, always uh, yeah. It's every every year or two. There's always this new virus that goes around, and people that's mutated, and there's no way to stop it, and it's going to kill us all. And then I don't know anyone who gets it. And they all become uh, medical experts about it. Uh, it's oh yeah, funny. everyone knows. I was talking to my coworker, and he's uh, his what he said. His wife actually uh, like makes coronaviruses in the lab she works at. Um. And it's interesting. Yeah. Well, does it's, her it's, boss know about this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, 
we, we found patient zero. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just like it's it's when it when when it comes out and you hear about the coronavirus or whatever the the latest virus is, uh, or the virus of the year, and everyone acts like, oh, it's this brand new thing, and it's like, well, no, these like they don't even understand that it's just like a class of virus or class of of disease or whatever uh, it is that it's that it's. So people will come up, hear these other stories, and hear about coronavirus, and say, oh, oh no, it's everywhere. It's like, well, it's not the same thing, or it's similar but different. Like, it's, it's just, it's frustrating. Like you said, I think the boy that cried wolf is the perfect thing to say about the coronavirus, because I don't know. All I know is that every year, we're, we're just kind of told that, hey, you got to... You got to do these government approved vaccinations and, and take your, your pills and medicine and all this other stuff and panic because uh, this virus is out and it's going to kill everyone and it never does. Um, and so now we have this kind of same kind of situation. And, you know, my reaction is it's like, well, what's the difference between this and anything else? I don't know. I mean, it could be something different. And I right, don't it have could a, be like really bad. Right, I mean, and I have no I have I have absolutely no qualifications to say that it is the same or different than all the other previous stuff that came out. Um, but the fact that before it was always overblown and you know they're just, you know inducing panic and and whatnot, it's like, well, what do you, how do you expect people to react? Right, so. Um, I hope it's not something that's going to, you know, be a major epidemic. Um, you see stories coming out of China where there, you know, there's evidence of of it being a, a pretty pretty bad situation over there. I'm sure it's not good anytime you have a virus, you know, a new virus like this. And in the area where it's uh, where it's spreading, it's it's certainly going to be. And what is, do you thing. know, like, what the deal is? Is it, like, the flu that kills you, or, like, what happens? She's like, I'm not do you know sure. anything about it? No. I, I mean, is it mostly killing elderly people, or? I don't know. Uh, I don't um, I don't know much about it. I, there's one thing, I, I think I'm confused. I don't want to say what I think it uh, happens to you, because I think I'm confusing it with something else. Okay. And I don't want to have yeah. bad information out there, but um, I think it, I think one of the issues with coronavirus is that uh, the symptoms take a while to show up, even after you've been infected and had it. So you're so, carrying it and spreading yeah, it, but you don't know you have it. Right. So it makes it more difficult to, to kind of deal with. But like there's been so many, so many, so much stuff coming out of China. Um, like they'll say, uh, like if there's a video of uh, a hospital that it looked like like pandemonium in there, like it was so crowded and, and it was chaos in there, and people were saying, "Oh, look at this, look at this uh, hospital in China. This really shows that the coronavirus is really ravaging them over there." And someone was like, "Dude, I I've, I've, I'm from China. This is what hospitals look like all the time." So hmm. I think you really got to take a lot of the information that you information out of China you hear with a grain of salt. Uh, wait for other people to kind of corroborate it or at least give someone who's from there or has special knowledge or better knowledge than you to kind of give their two cents um, because there's it's very easy and I've seen it already that people I there's another video where it was like uh, they're showing someone it's like oh this is a guy with coronavirus uh, vomiting blood on a, like a subway or a train and other people were like, this is an old video, and the guy slashed his own throat. So, <laughs> and, but like, you know, a lot of people believe that, and and we tend to be trusting people, and when someone says, hey, this is this is something, and we tend to believe it. So, like, the latest video I saw was they were, um, uh, I saw a video, they were apparently welding uh, doors shut in an apartment complex to try to contain the coronavirus over there. Mm. And I I mean, my reaction was like, well, is that actually what's going on in this video? I mean, it's, right. it's not, How do we know? it's not like they're speaking English and we could be like, well, yes, we these people have coronavirus and it's, it's like an overhead, mm. almost look like it's from a helicopter or something. 
Didn't ABC News or something show a gun range in Kentucky and say that was Syria? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I just, it's things like that that make me not trust. Yeah, I'm sure the news is right, so, you know, a lot of the time, but it's just, I always have to do, let's let's get a second source on this before I just trust what I see on the news. Yeah, yeah, and, and, which is frustrating because if, like, if we're about, if we're on the uh, precipice of a major p- pandemic. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of frustrating that I'm sitting here kind of leaning on the side of they're probably lying about how bad it is and they're right. just trying to induce panic and there's been a lot of kind of changing gears on on the coronavirus a little bit but people are trying to figure out you know where it came from and i've been hearing so many conspiracy theories about it and people saying oh it's a it's a it's an attack doctor. it's a weapon yeah. all this stuff and it's like well i mean again it's Every year or two, we have a different virus that comes out that's that's real bad. So, I mean, what's what's the difference this time? And then also, just because you, if 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 governments, whether it be China, the United States, or or another one, decide to um, yeah. enact some draconian measures to try to deal with it or, or something. Uh, people say that that act like that's evidence of that the government was the one that created it in the first place. But there's a quote by uh, former Chicago mayor Rahm Emanuel, who back in the uh, Obama Obama years early on wasn't he like one of his czars or something or someone close in his cabinet? Uh, he might have been like he? a chief of staff or something. Yeah, I don't something know what like that. He was he was around. Yeah. But he had a very important quote that people have seemed to have forgotten, and it was, never let a crisis go to waste. And so – Yeah, not necessarily start the crisis and use it, but when there is a crisis, don't let it go to waste. Right, right. Um, just like there are bad things that happen in the world, and it's not always the government is the one that is lighting the fuse to start it. But – they're smart that doesn't enough. let them off the hook. <laughs> no, no, but but like when something goes on, they're smart enough to be able to take advantage of it. Just like with yeah. every time there's a shooting, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't like the government, and when when there's the latest shooting, they'll try to they'll they'll immediately go out to try to prove that it was a uh, some sort of government plot or that it didn't even happen. There are crisis actors involved. Because it's like, well, the government's trying to use it to their advantage to to take guns from people. It's like, well, yes, they're trying to use it to their advantage, but they're just taking a situation that happened and, you know, using it to their advantage to to uh, to try to uh, push their agenda. I mean, That's bad their stuff agenda. happens. That's what I they mean, do. Yeah. Here's here's a real good example of that. Um, the most recent mug on Liberty Mugs. And it's also T-shirts for both the men and the ladies, but it's uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez recently had some sort of like uh, Instagram video or something where uh, in the uh, uh, the what's it called like the caption of her picture or video it referenced the uh, famed economist uh, Milton Keynes. He was good. <laughs> yeah, famed economist and. Uh, you know, we use that as 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 fodder to make a mug. So you know, it's not exactly a crisis, but never let an opportunity mm. go to waste. That's, that's but how do we know that McFlugel didn't get her to say that to sell mugs? Yeah, I mean, we did. We actually did sell a shirt today. One of those shirts that I that there we you made. Go. So, so obviously, out. obviously. It means that we were probably the uh, the catalyst for that. We're Correct. the ones that uh, that influenced her or gave her that bad information, or or just created that video and that picture and put it out there. Um, there's no other no other explanation for it. No way that it just like something happened and we just took advantage of it. Right. But speaking of that. So- it is pretty funny. Like, she doesn't exactly uh, do herself many favors about uh, 
coming across as doltish. <laughs> and uh, this this did not help her case. Um, and I don't want to like. And run... I can you can forget. I mean, I know. Look, no, I was just about to say I don't want to run like I'm not. I don't want to run victory laps over her for making that mistake because you know if I, yeah, man, but I, it just seems I like mess one of those things all the time. Of course, but that's like those are uh, you know two very like if you have any economic knowledge at all, if you've studied any economics, you know who the two people she combined are. Right. Like it's not a real um, common mistake to make. It's not between and, John Maynard Keynes and, and Milton Friedman. It's one thing if you, <laughs> you know if you if you say it out loud, but she wrote it down yeah like, like that normally means, that's where you you know don't it's kind of like if, if i got into a new topic or i don't know a new thing and you're, you're getting a bunch of names thrown at you and you kind of like combine like it's something i'm not real familiar with but right like if you said that um the lightning network was uh the brainchild of charlie lee and litecoin or something yeah uh, you make that like idiotic sure. mistake sure sure but um no but the bigger issue with that is that let me pull because I have the picture. Let me pull pull that picture up because I don't. It's it's less about the um, her making that mistake, but more about what she was talking about that that I think is is more worthy of a discussion. So on her Instagram, it said, you know, have the ask me a question. Let's discuss the benefits of a four day work week, please. And so the <laughs> caption says, "It's funny you you asked this. I was just reading today about how in 1930." Fame economist Milton Keynes predicted that by 2030, GDP and technology would have advanced so much that it would allow everyday people to work as little as 15 hours a week and provide for their families. So, yeah, um, here we are. Yeah. Well, I mean, not really. We're not at 2030 yet, so we still we still have another 10 years to get down to that 15 hour work gotcha. week. Um, but like. This is where she's probably demonstrating her doltishness is that like not understanding why this we have this happened. Yeah. yeah. Like probably just like blaming want to blame like the rich and they're just being selfish and everything. Making um, us work. Yeah. The big irony is that like um I'm pretty sure that she and many like her when asked about where uh the five day work week, the forty hour Eight hour day, uh, yeah, work unions. week with yeah with with the two day weekend. Oh, those the unions did that, not like that. Production uh, right. and technology drove that. <laughs> like, like the reason why people in um, you know the fourteen hundreds weren't talking about how we need to have a five day work week. Yeah, and so it's like, well, why why do you think that we uh, we don't only have to work 15 hours a week to be able to, you know, sustain our quality of life. Like, what, I, Why? I, because yeah. rich people make us. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Um, and if we would put a law in that would say rich people have to stop making us work, then we wouldn't work. That's true. And we'd still have all the same stuff. We'd probably just have a lot more vacations and cars because and I wouldn't be working yeah. all day. So I'd be able to go on more vacations. Yeah, I wouldn't be the only one with a tractor. Every Everyone would have at least one tractor. Life would be better. And it just – like she's not the only one. I don't want to just like no, – But it's like, like seriously though. Her. Like, yeah, I mean, I imagine you're going to go toward, inf you know, inflation and currency. Yeah. Like, um, no one not ever, being able to save. No one ever talks about that. And what's really frustrating is that the Republican and conservative types are going to, you know, would see that and be like, oh, you're just a stupid, you're just lazy, socialist, that doesn't want to work. Yeah. Oh, we should be working more time than that and, and and never acknowledging that oh wait there's this federal reserve that has absolutely destroyed the value of the dollar since it since its inception just absolutely pummeled it 
and has not I mean, given it any sort of breath and just continues, continues to just drive it deeper and deeper uh, into, uh, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm sure most people listening to this show kind of know that, whether, you know, how much you understand it or not. But uh, certainly they know that. But just Google the purchasing power of a dollar since 1913 and – there it is. I mean, that's why you have to continuously work 40 plus hours every week. And I think that, you know, when, when someone comes up, you know, obviously we're, we're, most of us are probably not going to be having conversations with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, but a lot of us are going to have conversations with people that kind of think like her and want to blame the rich. And you can sit there and say like, oh, you stupid socialists that just want to blame the rich. Which is true. Right. But I think it's better to try to explain this concept of however the though it you you want to see uh, a, a a look of confusion and um, zoning out and going all right you're crazy bring up the Fed or you don't even have to bring up the Fed just bring up like uh, a you know. Appeal to some Walter Williams stuff, like his uh, his work, The State Against Blacks, and um, just using that as, a, as an example of how government licensure laws have just been awful to people, mm-hmm. absolutely awful. So it's it's you know people want to people want to work, and they're legally not allowed to. I mean, you got to get all these ridiculous licenses that are only there because they've been lobbied by the uh, the the businesses. That are already uh, uh, have a market share, and they're powerful enough to lobby the government in order to create, you know, nonsense licenses. Well, I think it's Milton Friedman too who talks about the AMA and doctor licenses, mm-hmm. and how I believe it was in the uh, depression they wanted to the the purpose of these licenses was to keep the wages high of the doctors who were currently working. Sure. It wasn't. It wasn't for consumer. It wasn't like the consumers were like, we have all these bad doctors. We are begging you, government, to um, certify them. It was the doctors got together and thought more people are going to be coming into this market, and our wages are going to go down, and we need to keep people out. Yeah. Uh, it's and that's. I mean, Milton Friedman talks very. Um, if, if you Google if you Google Milton Friedman AMA, you can probably see this talk he did. It was really good, um, and he talks about that with like any licensing is like plumber. The it's not there was not a this like demand from the consumers who were saying we have all these bad plumbers. It was the plumbers who went to the government and wanted the licensing because people can learn how to do it and charge less dollars than someone else, and unless you make it illegal for them to work, now they can't. Yeah, I mean, look at the uh, uh, for a, a very recent example. All the I forget where it was, but the, poli- the one police department arrested like over a hundred uh, handymen. Yes, it was down in Florida. Yeah, they weren't uh, licensed. Like a, yeah, unlicensed. Yep, and they're patting themselves on the back for like, oh, we're protecting consumers from people that claim that they're certified contra or whatever. They're oh, they, they set up a like, just think of what I, I mean. See, they set up like a nine-month sting operation, had like five houses, and went online and said they needed work. I mean, it's, I mean you if that's what you do for a living, I think you need to reevaluate. Yes. I mean, can you imagine? Like, that's what I want to – I would love to just ask one of the, the cops or anyone involved in, in that operation and be like, do you go home and like brag to your kids about – what you did that day that oh daddy what'd you do you're you're a police officer what'd you do to, did you did you catch a, a murderer today he goes no son you know what i did i i served the community and i protected our community because a guy did not have a permission slip from the government government to perform handyman work what's kind ah, of funny about you, that too is you can do work on your own house. There's commercials all the time for do, DIY. You know, you can you can YouTube it. However, if I wanted to pay someone to like 
say I wanted to pay you to do it, I guess that would be illegal because you're not licensed. Yeah, mate, potentially. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know are. how that works. I mean, I was going to fix my deck um, and I'm probably going to have someone help and I might pay them. Uh, does that make that illegal? Not that it matters. You better get um, permission. You better yeah. Get permission, Slappy. Uh, I just think that's kind of strange. Like, what? It, like, am, am I allowed to hire a friend if it's my house? Like, you know what I mean? Is, is it illegal to market yourself as someone, or is it illegal to actually do the work and get paid? It's, it's a good question because you know it, what I mean. Just, it like, just goes the to show the arbitrary, how arbitrary yeah. it is, and how stupid it is. Um, and then you like, does anyone actually sit there and wonder who's? the people responsible for pushing those sorts of laws like it's I, yeah like it it it's so obvious i i mean to give an absurd example but it's true is that there was a uh, um like cops have shut down like little kids lemonade stands cuz they didn't have the proper licenses and um you know certifications from uh like the uh what's it called to like the food inspectors permits or what yeah, yeah whatever and it was because of like local restaurants were tattletailing that's funny and it's like that's that's i mean that's what all this stuff is funny if it wasn't so sad right no matter this it's always on a different it's it's whatever scale it is but it's always the kind of the same thing it's the the businesses and obviously not all of them but a lot of these businesses that are already kind of nested in these markets that it's they decide that it's cheaper for them to just pay off the government to eliminate competition for them as opposed to actually just providing a better service to keep competition out i mean it's it's wild it's great the uh, there was a south park episode about uh when timmy came up with a handy car timmy. yeah timmy. um and it was the episode about uh, the taxis versus uber and, uh, you know, all the taxis were really, really mad that uh, Timmy Carr was taking their business. And so one of the the, like the special need kids was, uh, was trying to team up with the taxi drivers to take Timmy down. And his sidekick uh, goes like, duh, don't, wouldn't it be better if you just provide a better service to compete with uh, <laughs> Timmy in the open marketplace? <laughs> and. And like all the all like the taxi drivers were like, "What?" And he's like, "Excuse my friend, but he is mentally disabled." <laughs> it's like, but that's what it is. I mean, South Park can do an episode about it, and I think most people will understand the concept and even agree with it. But then, when you actually put it into practice, and there's like this very slight bit of nuance that's required to to kind of sort through this stuff, and they just shut their brains off. It's uh, it's crazy. But I think if we actually, instead of just, when, when people bring this kind of stuff up, like it's, you know, why, you know, why the poor struggle and all this stuff and, um, you know, why we don't have shorter work weeks, whatever it is, I think it's important to, that you, that instead of just calling them like communist or something, to bring up what's actually is the problem because you'll probably – they agree, whether you want to admit it or not, they're pointing out a legitimate problem. That, yeah, we have all this technology, we have all of this wealth that's created, but why are we still, why is everyone still working a 40 hour work week? Why are people still, like, you know, not, not, uh, not at a quality of, uh, or standard of living that you would, you would expect with all the stuff that we have? Um, try to explain to them that that it's the Federal Reserve, and like you said, no, that is a great way to to get eyes to glaze over. But just say that, like, hey, there's there's people out there that are lobbying the government to to create like stupid licenses and everything to prevent people from kind of earning a living. So it's a, it's an opportunity to to get people on your side a little bit, or or to start understanding stuff. Um, they're not going to automatic. They're not going to like. You're not going to explain this to them, and they're suddenly going to say, "Oh wow, I, I completely agree with everything you say." But it's going to make them think, mm -hmm. and it's going to maybe trigger something in their head that, 
that makes them think about this in a little bit different way that instead of just saying oh it's just it's just selfish people selfish rich people that are preventing uh these poor people from ma earning a living they'll say well it's selfish rich people that are that get slime balls in the government to make to make uh to make corrupt and bad laws to work in their favor mm -hmm. so maybe maybe it's the little you can plant a little seed that's going to make people start thinking about this stuff a little bit better it's worth the shot now <laughs> what if they say okay so what's your solution what fixes this <laughs> You say eliminate. I mean, yeah, no <laughs> government. I'll just say Bitcoin fixes this. Exactly. Um, but you could say like, well, maybe we shouldn't have um, these banks that don't really answer to to anyone. Kind of just printing money willy nilly that that erases the purchasing power of your money. Maybe that's not really such a good idea. Um, that the, the people that control the money system are the ones that profit the most from it. Like that's another one. Like explain it that explain try to explain the Fed that way, because um, that's that's reason to make anyone angry. Well, yeah, and when the when the Fed uh, expands the money supply, the people who spend the money first get to spend it at the prices before the currency is inflated. Right. So they're the ones who gain from it, and we or most common people lose purchasing power on their money. I mean, that's how it works. Yep, it's the Cantillon effect. Yeah, and so yeah, so like explain that to people. I put mean, it, and that should make term. sense. That's pretty simple. Like that's not a that shouldn't make their eyes glaze over. That should be interesting. Right. Like, oh, okay, I can see that because you know, these AOC types are mad at the rich to begin with um, just for the wrong reason. Right. Yeah. There's there's actually a lot of reason to be annoyed and angry at a lot of the people that have control a lot of the wealth. It's cronies. Yeah. Uh, it's just frustrating that it's always like, oh, capitalism is evil. And it's like, well, no, we're not in a capitalist system right now. That's the problem. We're, we have bad definitions that uh that people are operating with preaching to the choir here i think yeah i hope uh, if not then uh then we've done a real bad job <laughs> <laughs> or, or who are our listeners we should do some uh polling yeah i don't know my mom your mom <laughs> i think that's it that's two yeah so that's uh i don't know kind of all talked it out on that i don't know i don't know what else to say about that also yeah the, the only other thing to say just to, uh, to to keep this in the in the political realm was the uh uh the iowa caucus uh coin flip video that booty judge won yeah like going back to the uh kind of what we were talking about before with nancy pelosi pre-tearing the paper and how it's choreographed and and just it's just insanity this one like i don't know this I, I this kid that did the coin flip was acting like he had no concept of of what a coin is of what a coin is what a coin flip it was is, brutal how you do a coin flip and it's like was that on purpose do they just like flaunt it so much that they're just like yeah we'll just we'll just be sloppy and it doesn't matter or is that just is that the kind of uh, absolute, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, just incompetence that these people had. I mean, back well, in the day, back a well, I'll say this: back a long time ago, I ran a couple times for my town's uh, borough council, and so when I was doing that, I was helping out kind of with the local election. So I was count helping count votes and everything. And there were some people, they were like old women that were from my church that I kind of knew that were counting the votes and kind of doing this and I was watching them do it and they were, you know, trying their hardest. They were not trying to, to do anything wrong. Heart, hearts were in, in the right place in the sense that they were trying to, you know, just count the votes. And I remember sitting there being like, they're going to screw this up. And I think they did. And it was like painful to see them like try to try to work through this stuff. So uh, it is, 
it is well within the realm of possibility on the local level like that that you just have people that are just blithering idiots. What was um, the point of the coin flip? Was it because they didn't have a vote count, so they were like, who's going to win? Let's flip a coin? No, nah, I think it was like a tie. It was a tiebreaker. Oh. Like, there's a lot of t- – like, in, in in sports, actually, they do a lot – that a lot with, uh, like, seeding and for determining playoffs. Like, if there's – if, you know, there's tiebreakers that, that go so deep into it um, that they can't determine who has the – Everything keeps getting tied throughout the different rules, and they just say, oh, it eventually has to flip a coin. Didn't that happen kind of recently? Wasn't there a coin flip in, in a major sport within, like, the last five years? Sounds You always familiar. hear about it whenever there's, like, a tight playoff race or something, but it never happens. I think there was, but I don't remember. Um, but this was, like, four years ago in the last presidential election cycle. Like, Hillary Clinton won, like, 16 out of 16 coin flips or something pretty lucky so, yeah it was something insane like that and like oh wow it's, uh take those people to the uh, well if or something. if hillary if you were flipping a coin for what you know and it determined whether a clinton won or not would would she win absolutely yeah no doubt about it yeah <laughs> who would who would be so stupid to, to... <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, well. If you haven't seen that, I'll try to remember to put that in the show notes page. That video, because it's just it's just absolutely wild. Like it's pretty it, bad. It almost it was almost painful uh, to see that video of ever, everything about it. Just the way people reacted to it, and just this god, oh, this kid. The way the guy flipped the coin was so weird. And then the way he grabbed it and just like heads, its heads. It's, I don't know. It's weird. And that should, I hopefully people, like, that starts, like, waking people up, regardless of whether they believe that it was cheating or just, uh, just massive incompetence to be like, wait a second. This is how this stuff is getting decided. The other thing, too, is that, like, all these primaries and stuff that are going on and people think you know, act like it matters and everything. Don't the Democrats decide their candidate, presidential candidate, by like the super delegates or something? Certainly a big part of it. I don't know if most of their votes are super delegates or what. Yeah. But I know it plays a big role. And that's why Hillary was able to beat Bernie last time. Well, they were I'm like changing, sure. they were changing their rules like mid primary. Yeah. When it was like, served Hillary Clinton. And it's not just the Democrats. I remember what really made me uh, fully disillusioned with politics was, I guess it was 2012 with Ron Paul, how there were like videos of Republican primaries and caucuses where the head of the, the, the party there was just like, yeah, we're just don't count Ron Paul's votes. And just like <laughs> blatant in your face cheating. Just don't do it. Yeah. And it was and it was unbelievable, and no one cared. Nobody, nobody cared. And that's even I, the people who think like democracy is so important, or I, at least they say that. I remember talking to someone who's you know more conser- on the conservative side, and and everything. And I remember like showing it to him, and he's kind of just like, oh, "Man, that's politics." And I was like, "Well, you're, yeah, that's politics, but you're going to go vote for these people still, and you're going to act like the Democrats are like evil and corrupt and everything, and you just you just kind of laughed off." Your side doing it. It's crazy. But <laughs> that's politics. Uh, exactly. So, um, did you free market success? Unless you had something else to talk about. Um, no, I, I mean, that covers what we, what we said we were going to talk about. Um, do you have a free market success story? Not really. I, I haven't been thinking about it much. Do you? I kind of um, have one that's not – well, it's not well, really a free market success story. So I was going to say this is not a free market, but it somewhat is. I mean there's some choice. And uh, I talk about I, w- I was looking at schools last week and just kind of trying to figure out ways. Statist. Um, <laughs> yeah, I am. We'll be sending my kid to a school. Uh, we thought, you know, there's options in homeschooling and 
I guess public school and uh, Catholic schools and whatever other private schools there are. Uh, but it's not really a free market for schooling. I mean, we know we know this. There's certain uh, things that every school has to do. So it's not a market, but there is some choice. And one of the things that's important for me uh, and my family is not going to a traditional school. And so we found a classical education school that uh, we're planning on sending our kids to. And so uh, it's a little farther away, but it's just something that's important to to our my family. So we think we're going to do it. Um, but I guess what how it's a free market success is this was a school that um, the old school closed down and people came together and wanted to make sure a school continued and they they did and they did it and I guess you know you have to attract people or, or maybe there was people there who founded it who believe in the classical education uh, which which I'm I really like a lot and so they started this school and people come from all over the area to go there uh, it's not a huge school and but hopefully it's getting more popular and there will be more choices in the way that your kids learn if you can't homeschool because uh, obviously if you homeschool you can teach them any way you want but so that that would be my free market success is i was dreading having to send my kids to public school or uh one of the local schools and we were able to find an option out there good yeah i mean the market kind of even even despite massive uh, control by the state, the market still tends to figure out one way or another to deliver what consumers want, even when it's only a small portion of the aggregate of consumers. I mean, because most people don't care. Not that they don't care, but they're not aware of the problems with yeah, the they're education not aware. system. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're, they're, you know, we all live happy. through it. And yeah. yeah. And they just say, okay, well, I went to school. Yep. Yeah. Perfectly happy to send their kids to public school. And even the people that don't like public school or want something better, sending them to like, you know, a private school or a Catholic school, that's basically the same thing as, you know, has to follow the same rules and curriculum as a public school. Um, so they're really not solving that much of a problem there. So just I'm just saying that like the, the portion of people that care enough to go uh, the non-traditional route like you is like very, very small, but there's still schools in the area that, that can do that. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was kind of what I was getting at. It's not a free market, but there are options when we have some type of market. Absolutely. So. And just imagine how many there would be if we did have a market. For, I mean, if the department, if public schooling went away and compulsory schooling went away, and man, there'd be so many options all oh, over the well, place. Just, I mean, think about how much money you'd get back from just the school tax and how you'd oh, be able no. to apply that to something more useful for yourself and for the rest of the world. Oh, and kids would like, kids are dying to be useful and they're just not when they're at school. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever the kid we at, at the Crayola factory this weekend, and kids are coloring all kinds of stuff, and so proud of them. So whenever they do something, you know, help you make dinner by putting in like two ingredients, they're thrilled. Yep. Uh, they want to be useful. Uh, they don't want to sit in a desk and be told what to think and regurgitate it back. Yeah, and with that, I, especially with the regurgitation, I I, I yeah. just wrote an, a, a short article today about how. Schools kind of yeah, it's just about regurgitation and not actually about thinking about stuff. So, check that out. A um, little short piece, only take a few minutes of your time, but uh, I think it's worth worth the uh, little bit of brain power to apply to it. So, uh, with that, again, the show notes page will be mcflugel.com slash one eighty three. We'll link to some of the things we talk about. Also, check out libertymugs.com. We're trying to grow that site. Um, you can pay with Bitcoin, both uh, on chain and with the Lightning Network, and we'll also happily accept your fiat money. So, however you want to do it is good with us. So, uh, oh, also on the show notes page too, and I always forget. I think I've been saying it the last episode or two, but uh, we have a little Telegram group 
for the show. So uh, it's in the show notes page. Uh, so just click that and, and you can be added. And we have a little bit of fun there. Some good people there. are. I think we already have 10 people in there, including you and I. So good little group. Um, always happy to have more people have some interesting discussions. It's half of it's just like us posting pictures of the, the latest beer that we've had, <laughs> but that's a fun, fun thing to talk about. So, all right. Thanks for listening and we will catch you next week. Peace.